very warm welcome back to the channel. Many of you have asked lots of questions in response to my previous video about energy prices and the energy crisis. Some not referring to it as an energy crisis, but an energy price crisis. So I thought I would talk about a few of the things that are making these prices go higher and a few of the ideas that have been pushed around and whether I think they will or will not work. Just as a, an overview, this is not intended and is not indeed a politically driven video. I'm expressing no views of politics at all here. I'm just giving comments on uh, data that I've been researching and looking at to understand what's going on here and essentially just to shed some light on the whole industry so that you can uh, understand what's going on. First of all, if we look at um, the first piece that I've um, looked at this morning, which is Sir Keir Starmer calling for additional tax on oil and gas producers on the energy companies. Now, just to briefly discuss this. So there is uh, an additional energy tax on these companies for the profits that they are making because naturally uh, everybody is uh, a bit upset that they are making lots of profits whilst the prices are soaring for everybody in the UK. So Rishi Sunak had uh, levied an additional tax on these companies refusing to call it a windfall tax calling it instead an energy profit levy. An energy profit levy or a windfall tax whatever you want to call it is, is ultimately a similar thing which is effectively an additional tax on the profits of these companies that are making extraordinary profits in any given sector. This has happened before. It happened in 1981 under a Conservative government when banks were making extraordinary profits off the interest rates and it's happened again under a Labour government uh, much later on when utilities uh, were uh, making lots of profits again. So an additional tax to tax the profits, usually to assist the country, to assist uh, people within the country uh, to fund those additional costs and prices by way of some additional tax so the government can help back. Now, moving back to the article once again, um, some people will agree and some people will disagree. Um, of course, that's always the way. I'm not expressing my view. I'm just talking about it here. You can uh, form your own views and uh, decide what you think for yourselves. But uh, Sir Keir Starmer, essentially, according to the BBC, has uh, called for an extension on these taxes uh, to these companies and a freeze on the energy price cap. I talked about the energy price cap in a previous video. The price cap ultimately is, is designed <clears throat> to prevent the prices going too high, but they are being reviewed. So naturally, many people criticize them to say that it's not much use if it's being reviewed and increased, which ultimately doesn't cap the prices, which is what it's intended to do. What it is intended to do is to uh, cap them for a period of time so that it's somewhat predictable. But if it changes, very quickly, uh, several times a year, and goes up several times a year, then many people naturally think that's not much of a cap. Um, looking at uh, the rest of this article here, um, part of the plan is essentially to additionally tax these companies in order to be able to prevent this cap from going higher and saying that um, it would prevent anybody from paying any more uh, on their energy bills. However, this was criticised by a fund manager, George uh, Godber, in, of investment firm uh, Polar Capital, essentially saying that um, whilst this would be the biggest relief for every household in the UK, but funding it by targeting energy companies, he says, is a naive policy, uh, asserting that this could potentially be breaking international law and taxing the profits of companies making the money in the UK uh, would effectively be taxing companies abroad for profits that they make, which arguably is a, br a breach of international law. He says that these, both of these companies mentioned here make very little money in the UK. Now, this comes to another point that a lot of people may uh, be curious about, how they can boast these profits and yet the prices are going up. I'll come back to prices going up in just a moment, but it is uh, wrong to say that these companies are making all of these profits from the UK. Clearly, they are internationally traded companies and only some of it is made in the UK. I'm not going to get into uh, the ins and outs of specifically what they make in the UK, but the prices nonetheless uh, reflect 
uh, how these prices change. So let's move to look at how these prices are changing and why they are changing. Well, if we go to the Office of National Statistics here, we can see that um, before the 1980s, you, the UK was a net exporter of energy, meaning that the net amount is exported because we are using energy that we produce ourselves and exporting. So the net position is that we are exporting rather than relying on imports. That position changed in and throughout the 80s until the 90s, when again we became a net importer. But then again, before becoming a net exporter once again with the North Sea production, uh, as it says here, peaking in 1999. The current problems are that we are now moving. This, this is an old chart um, up to 2016, but it's following a similar pattern, um, relying on the import of energy. So moving to more recent trends, um, this released on the 29th of June of this year, 2022, the main points here are that the recent trends are huge trends upwards on the of the costs of the imports of fuels. So, particularly from non-EU imports. Now, this of course is driven by the war in Ukraine and the demand on fuels and power. In addition to coming out of lockdown and various other demands um, around the world, including China, huge demands for energy, basic economic supply and demand pushing the prices up. You can see the huge spike upwards in the cost of non-EU imports here. Essentially, this means it translates into higher wholesale prices, meaning the energy companies supplying the UK are paying more for the wholesale price and therefore it translates into a higher price within the UK. So as I said, there is an additional 25% levy on the what's referred to as extraordinary profits in the oil and gas sector. So if you think about the overall price and the price and profit margins, if the price doubles and the profit margin is the same, the profit is going to double because it's the same margin on the overall price they're obviously not going to reduce their profit margins just because the prices go up. Um, there's no compulsion upon them to do so. But that obviously does result in extraordinary profits. So there is an additional 25% tax levy on the extraordinary profits in the oil and gas sector on top of the existing 40% tax rate, uh, obviously corporation tax. This is to fund and help will help fund the cost of living crisis. But Here's another catch that people may or may not uh, be pleased with. Companies can avoid 90% of this additional tax if they invest in new oil and gas extraction, ranging from 46 pence in every pound invested up to 91 pence. So 91 pence in the pound, 91% they can avoid in this tax if they are reinvesting in new oil and gas extraction in the United Kingdom. So essentially, this means that there is an additional tax on these uh, extraordinary profits, but they can avoid 91% of it if they are investing in a new oil and gas extraction within the UK. Why? Well, this is a long-term plan, of course, because the UK is, as I said, currently in a net import position, meaning we are heavily reliant on imports of fuels from non-EU countries in terms of the price that's paid for those fuels. So it's not as simple as the government stepping in and taking over and setting up the, the government's own state-controlled uh, energy company, because if the UK is in a net import position, the government still has to import those fuels, even if the, go even if the government is running those companies. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, there is talk of re-nationalizing energy companies. Uh, as you can see here, Labour MP Sam Tarry said his party should call for the re-nationalising of energy companies. And this has grown in popularity with rising energy bills. Because if the government is running these companies, then obviously its paramount uh, priority is to provide energy at a reasonable and affordable cost. And even National Grid is to be partly re-nationalised to help to reach net zero targets. But the problem with all of this is that the UK is still reliant on energy 
the import of fuels. So until the UK can turn that around so that we are reliant on our own fuels and become a net exporter, the UK is going to be subject and at the mercy of these rising wholesale prices until we get that back under control. So hopefully that serves to explain a little bit of what this so-called windfall tax or as it's otherwise referred to an energy profits levy. As a policy objective, the government says that following these record high prices, the government introduced this energy profits levy, a 25% levy on the extraordinary profits that the oil and gas sector is making. This revenue will help to fund the cost of living. And the government has also been clear that the UK will continue to require oil and gas during the transition to be net zero, and that it wants to see the oil and gas sector reinvest in profits to support the economy, jobs and the UK's energy security. To encourage this, a new super deduction style investment allowance is being introduced with the levy to provide an immediate incentive for the oil and gas sector to invest in UK extraction. And so that's essentially it. The government wants the oil and gas sector to reinvest in oil and gas in the UK. The 25% levy or windfall tax is to assist the current position, whereas up to 91% of that is an allowance referred to as a super deduction style investment allowance, allowing these companies to reinvest what they would otherwise pay in taxes into new oil and gas extraction. So hopefully that serves to explain broadly what's going on here with the wholesale prices, a few thoughts about nationalizing companies, what these taxes are, and so on. Do leave your discussions and comments in the box below. As I said, this is not a political view or a political statement. It is just a very broad overview of what's going on here. So I hope that's of some assistance to you. Please do like the video and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.